Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Fresh. My name is Nia Malika Dixon. I'm an independent writer, director, and producer here in Los Angeles. I'm originally from Baltimore, and I am a Black Muslim woman. And I founded Audas Entertainment to provide a way for creators just like me to authentically create stories that are reflective of our unique perspective and experiences. And um, today for Fresh, we're talking about a series. We're talking about a series that kind of does a, a, the opposite of that. <laughs> today we're talking about The White Lotus on HBO Max. And what we do at Fresh is every week we discuss different television series that are streaming on um, several various different platforms. And uh, we discuss why they're great, what's so compelling about them, what's interesting about them from a unique perspective of being an audience member as well as being a creative. And as someone who loves stories, that's me, um, I do love uh, creating a series. I am um, a creator of a series called East of La Brea, and it's about a black Muslim woman and her roommate in Koreatown, Los Angeles. But even though I love creating television and film, I'm also someone who loves to watch television and film. And so um, whenever I discuss the series on these um, different episodes, it's from that perspective, from someone who's a creator as well as someone who loves storytelling. And um, I was discussing with my son, who is also a storyteller, but he, um, he writes animation. Um, the difference between what I'm doing with Fresh versus what a television critic does. And so I'm not here to critique the TV show. Um, I'm not here to, to tell you why you should watch it. I'm here to just, I'm, on it. I'm here to just talk about, um, what's good about it, what's lacking me as a creator and as an audience member, what I observe. And I know there are several people out there who are just as passionate about storytelling as I am. And so that's why, hey, welcome. And that's why I created this series. So today we're going to be talking about The White Lotus. And first of all, I want to say that unironically, the creator of the series is named Mike White. And um, he's a, a writer for several different other projects. Um, one of them of which I'm a fan, which is School of Rock, if you've seen that film. Um, and I've also read, you know, that he's created several other things. Um, however, that's the only project of his that I'm very much familiar with or um, I would be excited to talk about. Um, but The White Lotus was very compelling. I'll say that. <laughs> and it got Twitter talking, which is pretty interesting. So if you're a fan of controversial storytelling, and you like mess, you're gonna love The White Lotus because it is literally white mess. <laughs> what I like to call train wreck storytelling because you can't look away. And you as an audience member are wondering what else is gonna happen? Like, can they take it up a notch? Can it get any more worse than it already has been? And sure enough, it did. <laughs> um, the cool thing about the series was that it aired weekly which was pretty cool um i'm not a big fan of binge watching um even though some series you know lend themselves to binge watching i'm a fan of waiting in anticipation and each week i will admit i was waiting in, in anticipation for the next episode because i was wondering like can it get any worse <laughs> literally it did and the finale kind of reached its zenith of white mess. But let me stop before I get ahead of myself. First of all, I want to talk about what I thought was really cool about the series. And that was the music. And I did tweet about how I think the music supervisor, whomever is in charge of creating the soundtrack and putting the music where it belonged, they did a really great job. And one of the biggest things that I 
love about music and storytelling is when it cues you as the audience as to what you should be feeling um, or it gives you um, a sort of uh, foreshadowing so that you can kind of anticipate what's going to happen next. Um, and it really did that. The music for this series really did that. Although there were some placements of music where I was like, well, I don't get that. Like, why? Why is that even there? <laughs> Nothing is perfect, guys. Just know that. Um, and so the, the music really did a great job. And, and one of the things that I really liked was the use of the chorus. And so, um, like I said, often music carries storytelling and cues the audience as to what they should be feeling or like emotionally what's going on. And it kind of helped with trying to understand is this scene serious or is it meant to be satirical like because there were so many places where honestly as a storyteller i was like is this trying to be earnest or is this trying to poke fun and that's one of the things that i felt were there it was kind of problematic with the series was that occasionally i couldn't tell like the tone shifted um, between earnestness and satire and honestly I think that has a lot to do with the the writer of the series um, being rooted in a different kind of experience than what me as the audience member wanted from the story again I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> so um so yeah so the score was really good um there were pl plenty of places where it felt ominous like in and it was great because there were moments where you were on edge and you were like well what's going to happen next and again shout out to the use of the chorus because there were moments especially um there were visual moments like there was a scene where the um the young man the brother in the episode was watching a humpback whale and it was a beautiful moment you know and the use of music in that moment was perfect um there were many episodes where the landscape was gorgeous and the music partnered with it very well and it left you um mo moments that were very much breathtaking like um moments from the perspective of in the ocean and um, there were some long shots that were pretty glorious, um, including the sunrise and just, it was a beautiful location. So um, they really got it right with that. But the story itself is definitely rooted in toxic whiteness. And, and I'm not even hesitant to say that because I think that's what the creator was going for. And um, it's literally reflective of a singular perspective. And you get that by the way that some of the characters are painted but it didn't have to be that way like i honestly felt like it would have benefited from having some different writers to contribute to the story because there were so many places where some of the characters sorry I were not reflected in the writing they were left very much two-dimensional they were left um just not fully developed in a way that felt fulfilling. And um, that that's what happens when you have just one person writing the scripts. And it just, it's, mm, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> and even though um, their voices were a little lacking, there was some effort. So I can say that. I wanna be diplomatic about it. Um, but again, like I said, it was pretty unpredictable. And honestly, I'm not even sure if the writer was, um, if he was unaware of how unironic some of those scenes were. And the consistency in the storytelling was its inconsistency, if that makes sense. And um, when you're watching something, I don't know, I'm speaking for myself. When I'm watching the story, I'm looking for resolution. I'm looking for full character development, you know, and as a creator, that's what I want in my in my stories as well. That's what you want. If you're a creator of a series, you want your audience to feel like they can connect with these characters and the characters are not connectable if they're not fully fleshed out. So um, 
that kind of left me a little wanting. Um, and also there was a lot of, um, the story's perspectives were left empty when it came to the Hawaiian characters. And I wanted to see mainly the opening character. She was just, she just disappeared. Like, um, she was the one character on the staff who was a native Hawaiian and honestly she and the other staff member who um got key features were violently erased from the story like they just disappeared and i just felt like well they deserved much better honestly um but like i said the for the most part these were interesting characters even if they were two-dimensional they lended themselves to <laughs> the theme of the series, which is white mess. So like if, like I said, if you like white mess, you came to the right place. <laughs> um, but that being said, you know, as a creator, you don't want all of your characters to fit into a stereotype. You definitely want to give them depth. You want them to have nuance and you want audience members to be able to connect with various different characters especially if it's an ensemble show and that's what i was looking for with this series because it was an ensemble show and you have all these different personalities you should have a reflective in the story various ways that the story plays out through these different perspectives and that creates a richness as an audience member that will definitely keep you coming back instead of just um, like what I like to call train wreck storytelling where you just can't look away from the mess. <laughs> um, and then on top of that, there were some serious issues that the story definitely um, tried to broach through these different characters. I'm thinking about Paula. She was the guest of the family and um, she was definitely a what well, we as the audience would have liked to have as the voice of reason but ultimately her character did not evolve beyond being a, a stereotype like she definitely wanted to be a little bit more you know she brought up the issue of colonization she expressed her frustration and in one scene her disgust with the way that um colonization just you know made itself obvious to them however the the family just chose not to acknowledge it so much so that she left the dinner table um however her character didn't go beyond that i mean she literally was vomiting in the ocean however it didn't go past those what i like to call spectacle moments because you know as a character she didn't evolve she didn't give us more she didn't um she wasn't that voice of reason she didn't exact any change like ultimately all of the characters ended up being the same as they started and to me i mean that leaves you as an audience member it leaves me as an audience member unfulfilled you know when it comes to storytelling i'm totally um a believer that we as human beings tell stories as a way to create meaning um, and as a way to have a catharsis for things and this story definitely lacked catharsis there was no real resolution at the end um, and isn't that what we're along for the ride for like we're left unsatisfied at the finale of the white lotus and and perhaps feeling a little cheated because um, the story could have been a lot more than what it was right so like um the issues were skirted around you know the characters skated up to moments where they could have had an epiphany or a reflective moment where we as the audience could have had a um, a resolution or some sort of um even if a little bit of justice could have been dealt out for these quote-unquote colonizers visiting the island in Hawaii um, but none of that was ever approached and there were several storylines where there are plenty of opportunities to do that from the the spa 
um, character, Belinda, who is my favorite, um, even though I think she deserved a little bit more. Um, even she was held back from reaching her full potential as having a resolution, even though there was a scene where I thought she would be, she would get to that point where, you know, she would have that catharsis, but the scene fell flat where, you know, she was sitting facing the other character, this woman who ultimately became a trophy wife and she was on her honeymoon and um, somehow found this moment where she wanted to back out and even she didn't back out. Like, even she didn't reach her full potential where she could have actualized to a moment of evolution, but they just fell flat. Like, they just go right up to the edge, and then they're left there the same as when we started. And so that, for me, is why The White Lotus kind of left me deflated as, a, as an audience member. But as a creator of stories, as a creator of a television series, you can definitely learn a lot from this series because the number one lesson that I as a creator kind of took away from this is to give my characters um, a journey that they deserve, you know, like, you know, each of these characters went on this, this ride of their life, even um, Armand, the hotel manager, deserved more. Like, they went on this ride, but at the end of the story, they're, they're left with no catharsis, no real resolution, and even some of the characters were unceremoniously erased. And so, like, to me, that was the biggest takeaway. Like, give your characters more. They deserve a journey. They deserve... Um, that self-actualization that we as people uh, long for, which is why we tell stories. And so um, as an audience member, you get to self-actualize with these characters. That's the whole point. I'm a believer that that's the whole point of storytelling. But um, like I said, if you like drama, if you like mess, um, this is the story for you because there's plenty of that. There's plenty of drama. There's plenty of mess. <laughs> and um, you are definitely not going to be disappointed. Um, and you will be entertained. So there were moments, there were plenty of moments of entertainment. And the actors are amazing. Like I said, Belinda was one of my favorite characters. And oh, the way that she's depicted is just so beautifully done. Like the very powerful moments where she's, her exhaustion is just oozing out of her. And I totally felt that, like I totally um, resonated with that character, you know, because I've been there in those moments where as a black woman, I'm totally exhausted by the people in my life who just take and take and take and definitely don't see me beyond the two-dimensional character that they've painted. Ironically enough, that's who she was in this story. Um, and uh, Natasha Rothwell does a, a beautiful job of portraying her. So um, I do want to say that that was beautifully done. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to close out because um, I'm at the point where I've really reflected on all six of the episodes and they're very well shot. They're beautifully shot. The music is gorgeous. The acting is perfect, even down to Dylan, <laughs> um, the character who Armand kind of takes advantage of. Um, but ultimately, I'm left wanting more from this story. And honestly, I hope, um, because it's been renewed for a second season, I hope that they do take it to the next level you know i hope the characters do get the arc i hope that the story does get to evolve to a point where it goes beyond skirting up to that issue and then backing down whatever the issue is wherever they take it that's what i hope for the next season um but like i said if you like white mess you're gonna enjoy this so definitely check it out um, if not just for the acting and the music and those moments, those dramatic moments and those funny moments, actually, because Jennifer Coolidge is pretty funny. Um, 
you'll enjoy it. And tell me what you think. I definitely want to hear what you all think. Like I said, I'm talking about this from the uh, perspective of someone who's a creator of television storytelling, but also as someone who loves television storytelling as an audience member. So I'm I'm very curious to find out what you as the audience and you as the creator have to say about The White Lotus. So please do DM us. Next week is going to be our last episode talking about television series. Um, and we're going to switch to talking about film, which I'm super excited about. And I've decided to close out the TV series series <laughs> with a pretty awesome television series that I started watching just yesterday and oh my god it's really great it's I'm going to have fun talking about it and I'll give you a hint it's on FX but that's all I'm gonna say tune in next week um follow us here at Audas Entertainment and I can't wait I will see you next time bye <laughs>